finally, finally, the UK has some sunshine to brag about as well as a Wimbledon champion. But we don't want to be relaxing with a glass of chilled Pinot Collapso and a grass-coated burnt sausage. We want to be out foxing, especially when the grass that's not stuck to our banger has been freshly cut and foxes are on the lookout for a cheap meal. It's that time of year again. We've got uh, about 26, 27 degrees. Absolutely roasting, but the good thing is all the, uh, the fields are getting cut, so everything's been cut for hay. Um, everything's been cut today here, so we're going to have a quick stalk around. It could be a bit of a, a mixed bag. I'm hoping that we might pick up quite a few foxes later on when they start coming out. Um, and we might also pick up a roebuck or two as well, so fingers crossed we should have a successful evening. All right, let's get on with it. We haven't been on this bit of ground for a couple of years. Last time, Roy had rodos dancing all around us during the rut. But it looks like our first stalk of the evening might have to be sacrificed as Roy has spotted a fox jumping through the long grass. A fox was just walking along to our left hand side. I've just done a little bit of mouse squeaking, but it's a bit of a crunch time because we're coming up to where there's normally a few rows getting about. So I don't really want to make too much of a noise. And a and start really heavily calling. We'll just slowly stroll up and just see if the fox is out there mouncing. It's a shame he was probably just heading out to the fields that have been cut. This is the time of year in the UK when bucks are bold and foxes are foolish. Perfect for anyone out to shoot both. We keep steady and 20 paces further along, our fox pops out into the open. Lady Luck may be with us after all. With a bit of prompting, eventually Roy also notices the fox. It drops where it stands on the ride. Best laid plans and all that, so. It's a shame we had to shoot it then because as I say, we were just coming up into the main area where the row are, but that same fox that I saw walking out all of a sudden, where we'd been just very quiet and just slowly strolling up and it just walked straight out in front of us there. So, first one in for the evening, and away we go. It's a vixen that's obviously had cubs. This time of year, the vixens tend to be out hunting a little bit earlier. She's obviously mooching around, just trying to find a few meals for the cubs. But the cubs at this stage are gonna be quite well on. So, uh, I would have thought, come the evening, the cubs are probably gonna be out crossing about on the fields and then hopefully we can account for them then. Shooting the fox may have blown Roy's chance of a deer but it's not a complete dead loss. Sometimes you get a sense there must be deer here because if I were a deer I'd be happy here. We make our way through another small wood. At the end of the ride we see a doe grazing across the road. Typical. We've got deer on all the surrounding fields but no more we've got fish. This place has normally got quite a few on it, but it has been ruined over the last couple of years because there's been a lot of sheep grazing on here. So I'm, I'm sure the deer are around, but just not in the same numbers as they used to be. But then Roy's X-ray vision kicks in and a glance across this high standing grass reveals a young buck looking our way. So because we're losing light and we want to get onto the fields and set up for the foxes coming out before it gets dark, we're going to try and push our luck to walk along the top here and hope that he goes down and then stops and presents us with a shot. Normally in these circumstances it normally always goes wrong but you never know David might have turned into a good luck charm rather than a jinx. We work our way around. Making steady progress, Roy gets above the animal and even gets the sticks up, but the gamble doesn't pay off. The buck heads to the shelter of the wood and not down the slope. All is not lost and we head back up towards the ride we just came down. We get a glimpse of him in the clearing, but he's gone again. That's a shame, we've come back, back up the ride that he came up and he must have switched back and gone back to the stand that he was on. There's probably a bigger buck in the main part of the wood and he doesn't want to encroach on his territory too much so we've got to go down that way to get onto the foxes anyway so we might still come across them again what to do we walk back around and luckily in the 10 minutes or so we've taken our buck appears to have settled down to munch in a field further down the valley again the height of the grass is an issue what we're going to do every time he puts his head down and starts feeding we're going to make a few steps in, 
as he puts his head up, we, we camouflage quite well against the backstop of this wood, even though we're walking along the edge of it, so we're just going to see if we can get right up on him. He's down again feeding, we'll try and make a few stings. We're probably only about 70 yards away, but I just want to try and get it so we can clear a path for the bullet. You want it? So stupidly, I didn't bring my dog um, to track it, but luckily in this long grass, I just tracked it as it ran and it went forward and hopefully dropped just between those two trees. What I want to do though is just have a run up, check the blood and then we'll move into it. Some stalks can be physically taxing, uncomfortable, others straightforward. All have their own rewards. This has had a bit of everything. Roy has had to think on his feet, second guessing this buck, getting it wrong, then using the natural cover and understanding the buck's behaviour to move in close enough for a clear chest shot. Deer have a special technique to catch a potential predator with its proverbial pants down and Roy has shown how to bypass it. A lot of the time when you're stalking up on them like that they'll just dip their heads as if they're going to feed just long enough for you to start moving and then bolt their heads right back up again and that again is obviously yeah, millions of years of evolution uh, in waiting for predators or looking for predators stalking up on them so just wait a couple of seconds whilst they've got their heads down before you start moving. Roy cleans the animal and skins it for the landowner. It's now much later than we'd hoped so no more daylight foxing. It's out with the lamp. But first the bright lights of the local kebab shop attract us moth-like. What we're going to do is we're going to put the caller out in the middle of the field we're just going to have a scan around with the tack light to see if we can pick up the eyes. I've got the uh, red LED in again. Although the cubs shouldn't be lamp shy, I just like using the, the red LED to kick off just in case we come across uh, any wise vixens or dogs that are still out there. So we got the, the uh, vixen a little bit earlier on. We're going to start off there. Hopefully the cubs might be venturing out and they might just be on that freshly cut field there, just looking for some mice or what have you. And uh, as I say, we're going to put a few light, light rodent distress calls out first, see if we get any customers there. So uh, hopefully we shall get some visitors. Having had a fox in daylight, it seems a foregone conclusion that we'll call some in at night, especially on this freshly cut hay crop. But the first stand delivers nothing. The odds move out dramatically at the second stand, with mist lifting off the lake. Our visibility is reduced, but it does make the Nightmaster 800 look like a lightsaber. The foxes could be having a party 50 yards away and we wouldn't know what was going on. We are getting that time for bed feeling. Slightly lightheaded, not from too much sun and Italian plonk, but from the thrill of a successful bit of daylight foxing and a buck we had to work hard for.